The Batman has finally dropped, and it's an absolute game changer for the character, which is really like nothing we've seen from Batman on the silver screen. A gritty hybrid film that seamlessly mixes in crime noir with blockbuster action, The Batman borrows heavily from films like Seven and Zodiac, while being firmly rooted in the source material. This film also draws heavily from a number of fan-favorite comics like Frank Miller and Dave Mazzuccelli's Year One, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's Zero Year, as well as Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's The Long Halloween, among several others. The combination of all of these incredible stories as well as Matt Reeves' own spin on the character provided audiences with a wholly unique version of Batman that we can't wait to see more of. Warner Brothers has recently stated that their goal going forward is to focus less on a seamless cinematic universe like Marvel and instead focus on making strong creator-driven films, which is fancy corporate speak for we want to hire the best directors and let them make awesome movies without worrying how every little piece fits together. But before we begin, we want to thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. My wife and I have actually used this service a bit in the past and loved it, so we're happy to be working with them here at Key Issues as well. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, and with grocery prices skyrocketing, HelloFresh makes cooking fun, affordable, and most importantly, easy. I know when my wife and I had our second child, time management kind of went out the window. HelloFresh helped keep us on track with healthy and insanely good meals. It was also great because we were able to pick meals that we both wanted to try instead of just doing that old, what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? Back and forth for like an hour until we just settled on getting fast food. There was less food prep time, better portion sizes, and cleanup was a breeze without having to worry about a ton of packaging or trash to throw away. So if you're looking for a great way to try new recipes, eat healthier, or just save time and money, HelloFresh for me was a game changer. Use our link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGKEYISSUE16 for up to 16 free meals, plus three surprise gifts across six HelloFresh boxes, plus free shipping. That is an absolutely insane deal, and thanks again to HelloFresh. So now that we have a new universe and a new Batman, and we've even wrapped up his first major villain and arc, it's time to discuss what's next. Of course, we're interested in where the Batman goes from here. Will he get a Robin? What will he do to alter the Bruce Wayne persona? But more importantly, we want to know who he's going to fight. Whether it's a physical battle or a battle of wits, Batman has no shortage of fantastic villains. Batman is rivaled by only a few others as one of the very best rogues galleries in all of comic history, but he has also been featured in more live action movies than most other heroes as well, so when determining who we wanted to see as the villain in the upcoming sequel to the Batman, we took a few things into consideration. We wanted to pick really good quality Batman rogues without worrying if we're retreading too much of the same ground. We feel that there's plenty of opportunity for Batman villains to be used once again in a more comic book accurate light. Batman and his enemies are so iconic that you could make dozens of different interpretations of each that would literally be all equally valid. But with that being said, we're not really trying to discount any other previous incarnation, but rather highlight characters we'd like to see introduced into this new Batman universe in a new way. Before we begin, we want to give two honorable mentions off the list really quickly and justify why we're doing it. Obviously, big spoilers for the Batman will follow, so you've been warned. The first honorable mention is the Joker. Towards the end of the film, the Riddler meets another inmate through his cell, and the shadowy figure teased was clearly the Clown Prince of Crime himself, the Joker. Played by Irish actor Barry Keoghan, the Joker is the obvious next step, except he probably won't be in the sequel, at least according to Matt Reeves. Matt has stated that they currently have no plans to proceed with the Joker, and even Barry knew that going into the role, and while this may bum certain audience members out, I feel like the decision is valid, considering the Joker has already been seen in live action more than any other comic book villain. Cesar Romero, Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger, Joaquin Phoenix, and Jared Dumb. You know what, let's just move on. The universe is still young, and there's no reason to rush the Joker into the limelight. But I do like the idea of the Riddler and Joker teaming up. The Tom King run of Batman saw the war of jokes and riddles, where allies turned enemies created a literal hellhole war zone in Gotham, which would be a tremendous overarching narrative if done properly. 
The second honorable mention here would be Penguin. We already have him heavily featured in The Batman, and having his own Matt Reeves directed spin off show coming to HBO Max detailing his rise to criminal kingpin. I think we have Penguin covered. We really don't need another Penguin centered film. But Colin Farrell was fantastic. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of our actual picks. First up, we have Victor Freeze, aka Mr. Freeze. Personally, after observing how grounded in reality the majority of the Dark Knight trilogy was, I think it would be refreshing to have the Batman universe be a little bit more comic book-like, a little bit more fantastical. I think we can all agree that a well-developed Freeze story would be insane. The Batman focused heavily on the modern real-world issues like political and police corruption and the radicalization of disenfranchised peoples. A Freeze arc could easily focus on the very real problems with the breakdown of the modern societal infrastructure. For example, our healthcare system, seeing as Freeze's ailment and near entire motivation was finding resources and a cure for a degenerative disease killing his wife. Batman has always had a sympathetic side towards Freeze and his wife Nora. Perhaps that relationship could be developed further as Batman even possibly helps Freeze with the massive resources at his disposal. As a bonus, we're going to give you who we'd cast in each role, not like it matters, but for Mr. Freeze, our choice would be two-time Oscar winner Christoph Waltz. Bingo! Another strong choice for villain and a character we haven't seen in live action yet would be Basil Carlo, otherwise known as Clayface. The modern version of Clayface that most audiences are familiar with is a combination of the Golden Age Clayface, Basil Carlo, an actor and serial killer driven mad, and Matt Hagen, a treasure hunter who gains shape-shifting abilities after being exposed to a dangerous chemical. There is a world of opportunities available for this type of character. Basil was shown in the New 52 to attempt to unravel Bruce Wayne's life by impersonating him. The same could be done here using his shape-shifting abilities, leading to a final showdown against the monstrous form we've seen in the comics, animated series, and video games. Our pick for this role would be rising star Nicholas Holt. Next up, we have another new live-action bat villain, at least in terms of films. The Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter is another cerebral villain with a storied comic book history. Jervis Tetch as a villain is quite unique, and I think he would echo the type of tonality that the Batman went for. The Mad Hatter uses mind control devices to control his victims. Tetch derives his entire personality from the Mad Hatter found in Lewis Carroll's iconic Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. The Mad Hatter is a villain who oftentimes aims his focus towards women, seeking out the perfect Alice, so another investigative adventure dealing with Batman trying to apprehend a serial kidnapper and killer would be pretty thrilling, especially when you consider the fact that Jervis would have live victims and be putting Batman against the clock to save them. It would add a whole wrinkle to the story that we didn't see during Riddler's escapades. There's also a lot of fun that you could have with the mind control aspect. Tetch having the ability to control others with his mind control tech could be fun to play with as well, allowing for moments where Batman isn't sure who he can trust, not knowing who the Mad Hatter may be controlling. For the Mad Hatter, we'd love to see Lakeith Stanfield take a stab at this very underrated Batman foe. Dr. Jonathan Crane, the Scarecrow, is another character who's worthy of having an on-screen reboot. We last saw Dr. Jonathan Crane in The Dark Knight Rises, and he was a secondary villain during Batman Begins, and while we love the version that Christopher Nolan and Killian Murphy brought us in The Dark Knight trilogy, we believe that the character could be taken a step further in Matt Reeves' The Batman universe. Scarecrow, much like Batman, relies heavily on theatrics and terror as his main weapon, so forcing Batman to struggle against a tool he uses so effectively is a mouth-watering idea, especially with the tone established in the Batman. Scarecrow's fear toxin is his signature weapon, and it causes the recipient to live their worst fears, and considering Batman has dealt with traumatic loss his entire life and even went as far as discussing mastering it in the Batman, it would be great to see a younger Batman facing his darkest fears again and possibly realizing he isn't the true master of fear yet. Our choice for Dr. Jonathan Crane is one of the biggest actors of the last decade, Adam Driver, the GOAT. And the last villains introduced on this list will be a collective group of individuals known as the Court of Owls. Now, this is my own personal wish, but I really do hope that they go with the Court of Owls for the next film. The Court is a relatively new group of characters being introduced in the New 52 run of Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. 
The Court of Owls are a group of aristocrats within Gotham City that act as an Illuminati, running the city from the shadows. The Batman deals heavily with political corruption and systemic issues within Gotham that keep crime and poverty at the forefront of daily life. Taking that one step further would lead us to the Court of Owls who have existed since colonial times in Gotham, and act as mostly a boogeyman type story. In the comics, Bruce Wayne believed his own parents' murders may have been connected to the court. However, after diligently researching the group, he believed they were nothing more than a scary story. However, when Bruce Wayne attempts to use his power and influence to clean up Gotham, the court is revealed to be very real, and they sentence Bruce to death. The court uses genetically modified assassins known as Talons, made up of some of the most dangerous people in Gotham's history and kept alive for extremely long periods of time using advanced cryogenic technology. I mean, do I even need to sell you on how this could easily fit within this universe? With the connections between the Wayne and Arkham families and how those families were intertwined in the founding of Gotham all the way to the present in Bruce Wayne, who's a product of both, the sins of the father, like this writes itself. Another great aspect to this is that a wide variety of actors could be court members, hiding in plain sight as the mystery of who is involved unravels. One actor that really stands out above others that could play a leader of sorts to the Court of Owls would be Martin Freeman. And that is about every villain we wanted to cover today, but we did leave some pretty heavy hitters off this list, and we want to know who you want to see as the next villain, and who you would want to play them. So drop a comment down below, and we'll highlight some of our favorite picks in the comment section. This has been Nick from Key Issues, and we hope you enjoyed the discussion and our thoughts. Thanks for watching, and remember the motto, the Batman over everything.